All right, welcome back. Today, we're going to be making a C++ project and some code in C++. All right. So first things first, let's do that and then create a C++, just press. So once it's done, um, before we even open it, let's go to the Visual Studio installer, go to modify, and for C++, the specifics you need is only this. You don't really need any of this or any of that, even though it says game development, you don't really need it. So from here, the important stuff that you would need is this, this, and uh, this. So, but the most important out of all of these would be the core desktop, uh, debugger, profiling tools, Windows 10 SDK, get the latest one. I believe the latest one is this one. I didn't update it yet. And then get the C plus CLI support with the build tools, get the latest of that, and then get IntelliCode for IntelliSense. And that's about it. If you want to download the whole thing, go ahead. But I didn't, that was the minimum. So then let's just open the code IDE and it'll tell us to review the solution target. It says, just upgrade it to 142, which is the latest build, and we will upgrade it. And now we have it upgraded. I'll open the editor on the side, and we go inside the Solutions Explorer. So the game loops already visually here, but the problem is every time you create uh, code you have two options with C++ actually three so once you'll notice is if you actually wanted to add code like how you do it in C++ I mean C sharp you won't have the ability to do that you have the ability to uh, to make unigen script and properties and then you can add it into like an object but you can add a class into it unless you make it into a component so uh, I was looking through a few of the classes that they had and they do have a component based class and a component system class which you can use to make components out of classes and then it becomes a property and then you could just click and drag it into a node and you can edit it just like C sharp. Now how to do that? Uh, there's just a few steps. So first, first, first of all, we will go to app systems logic cpp and then we're gonna uh, initialize the component systems meaning we can actually use it first so that's the first thing we do we'll go into here and just copy and paste this I'm just gonna go here into that press hashtag include and then component system once that's done go right here into the init and over here we're gonna write component system get with the arrow initialize and that will make it so that every time we make a component system it's going to initialize it automatically next we're going to have to do one more step and that is going to be we're going to have to make unpack references this is for well, you can read it all over here. It's for node references inside the editor. Now, it's on default off, so we're going to turn it on. All right. Set unpack node references and just write true here. I can't type. And those are the two main steps to enable component based property classes for uh, C sharp. Now, if you actually wanted to make a class and just like stick it in here, this is how you do it. We got the base working, so let's just go into the main project, right click here. We're going to add a class <clears throat> and just give it whatever name you want. Um, some class, whatever. And it's gonna give us a header and a main file. So for the header, we'll go to the header first. We're gonna give it a 
unigen base header. And then for the class itself, we're going to do an inheritance. Basically, it means it's going to take some stuff from the other side. So for us, we're going to go public. Oops, public unigen uh, component base. So we're going to take the component base and how to make a component inside this class. Uh, first, we got to actually define what we're going to do as a component. So component underscore define. And inside these brackets, it's going to tell you you need a class name and parent name. So we're just going to take the class that we just made and we're going to make it as a component from component base. You have the ability to make other types of component, but the base one is the one that turns it into a property, which you can throw it into Unigen. Now, for this, we also have two things. If we go back to world logic, you'll know that to start a game, you need initialize, which means start the world, and update, which runs every frames. And then there is different types of update frame FPS type thing which we're not going to worry about right now but the two main ones that you will ever see are init and update so we need that too so they do have that it's component underscore init and then inside here we're going to write a function name which will be our init function so let's say if i just wrote this and i had function called that every time I call that function it's gonna be written in init so in our case let's just make it easier for us and call it in it uh, also all this is public if it's not public it's gonna mess with us so now let's add the update one and let's just name this function called update all right and now for protected, we're going to make a protected field. This way, if we do anything to it too much, it won't really ruin it because it's protected. Um, we're going to do the two functions that we had. So it's void init and void update. Oh no. So now they're actually linked. So now we have a function that's called init and it's going to be uh, initialized inside the components in it and update which will be initialized in the components update which is in the world logic and that's the basic of a class now let's say we wanted in C sharp if you've seen me do some code uh, I had like some properties that were visualizable so for that if we go back into uh, component based class that they have in their books right here they have the ability to show you the way so the property parameter would be one of the ways to get one type of property and you use that then the other one is property struct for structures but right now let's just do a property parameter so let's just write property underscore param and we give it a type, let's call it int. So you have to use a capital in the beginning. So if it's float, capital F. If it's string, capital S. And then just give it a name, random number. And now we got an int, which is a random number. Okay, so let's say we actually wanna register this component because it's not fully registered yet. We have to register it. So now let's go to the main class and we're in here, we're going to do a register component. What this does is whatever class we have, it's going to be considered a component now. And now just with that, we have the class considered as a component. Now for how to call functions, we have the exact same way as normal. So in our class, we have init and update all right let me go on here init and update we'll just do a void some class and then init and we do this and now we write our code here and then void some class can't spell 
update and that's it and now let's just build it once we finish actually building it it takes a few seconds for a new one once it's fully built it's done so now if we go back here give it a second we got a property which has that random num that we made right here right and now we could just click and drag that property here and now we have the random number okay so that's the basic of making a class into a property in C++ and using it that way uh, if you ask me it's not the fastest but it's better than writing a million line code in one class or making a bunch of classes that inherits from app world logic and then doing all that stuff this one makes it a little bit more easier for newer C++ plus coders because now you could actually do stuff right you can now initialize numbers you can actually click and drag stuff strings all that stuff good stuff stuff anyways so <clears throat> how about let's do some debug I guess we do need some debuggers all right so because I didn't use namespaces we're gonna have to do it the old way Lizer set enabled and then we make this true which means now we can see those visualizers that's one of our main debuggers that we're going to use and then the other one's going to be the console but the thing about console is it's default enabled so we don't really have to write that so now we can just go message and we just say hi I'm also going to add a visualizer I guess no And now we can do a render of a visualizer. So just press a comma. Over here, we need a vector. So we're just going to do a unigen math vector three underscore. I'm just going to do one, which means it's one, one, one in world space. Um, for size, is that. And then for the color, got that. Math uh, vector four underscore black. So uh, basically, a render point 3D. If we ever hover on it, it requires a math function that's a vector three address. So you can put pointers here. Um, you got the size of that point, and then an address for uh, vector four. Vector four is your color RGBA vector 3 is your position in world space in our case we wrote vector 3 1 which is basically 1 1 1 since we're looking at it in reverse if we look at it like this is going to be 1 1 and then 1 up into the air now if we were to just press hello up oh, there you are now if we just press debugger There we go. We got a point in space, and then we got high written right there. And we're done. Oh, to access that um, console, you have to press this button, which is basically the swirly button uh, right next to the one while you're in game. And yeah, now we have a visualizer, we have a component system, and we have uh, debugging available I guess that's it well for next episode we'll see what I can do probably make uh, matrices movement node referencing probably do the basics first just so you guys can get comfortable with C++ yeah I guess next episode we're gonna do just a few more episodes on getting familiar with C++, getting familiar with our property, uh, referencing, using some pointers, all that 
simple not really simple but good stuff and yeah until then see you guys